Chapter 1. Beta Testing <clears throat> Noah ducked, then rolled, as the Urzig's colossal hooves crashed down right next to his face. The ground shook and a cloud of dirt erupted from the earth like a geyser. He covered his face as debris and small rocks hurtled down around him. Noah could feel all the vibrations from his full-body VR haptic suit. Ro! Watch out! called a female voice. But before he had a chance to move, he felt a strong vibration on his legs in the real world as the Urzig's spiny, rock-encrusted tail slammed down on his legs in the game. Critical damage taken. Noah checked his health points on his indicator bar above. His health was down to 50 out of 100 HP, and his stamina was down to 10%. Another hit like that and he could fail this hunt. He had already fainted twice before, before during this battle. <clears throat> now, down to his last vigor, he had to be extra cautious in his strategy. I need to play more defensively. The giant creature lifted its tail, ready to finish Noah. But he anticipated this and rolled backward out of the monster's reach. Shit! Shit! That was a huge blow! cried the voice again from an outcrop some distance away. It was his party member, Flory. I lost it. She crouched down and lowered her crossbow, aiming at the large beast's underbelly, the only part of the beast that was exposed and not covered with rock armor plating. She closed one eye and took in a deep breath. She couldn't afford to miss her aim. Flory pulled the trigger and unleashed a Trank Bolt. Trank Bolt. Instant damage. 35 physical damage. Damage over time. 90 toxic damage over 3 seconds. Primary effect. 80% chance of tranquilizing target for 15 seconds. Side effect. 10% chance of hallucinogenic side effect over 5 seconds. Secondary effect. Due to the side effect, target enters an enraged, trance-like state known as bestial rage, increasing attack damage by 100%. The trank bolt hit true, right in the left flank of the Urzig. The beast instantly dropped to the ground, asleep. Flory let out a deep breath. Noah could sense that she was not only relieved with her accurate and timely hit, but that she was probably also relieved that her trank bolt side effect did not trigger. Probably more so the latter, considering that elves had great accuracy, particularly moonweave elves like Flory. Therefore, precision was, left an, was less of an issue for her. Oh, thanks! I owe you one! Shouted, Nor shouted Noah. He analyzed the motionless monster with his analyzed species ability while he tried to, cover from, tried to recover from the earlier attack. Erzig, level 10. The Urzig is a ground-dwelling, rock-encrusted monster with high armor and defense against physical attacks. Its appearance always resembles the stones around its habitat and surrounding ter territory, making it difficult to see until you are too far too close to it to escape. Species, Terra Behemoth. Size, Medium. Role, Omega. Status, Asleep. Element, Terra. Strength, High Armor, High Defense and Camouflage. Weaknesses, low agility, astral and tempest. Resistances, shock, blaze, and torrent. I've got you! Called his friend Rye with his booming... Let's try that again. I've got you! Called his friend Rye with his booming, almost guttural voice originating from the half-work in him. He pulled Noah up with his thickest arms covered in tr... With his thickest arms... Noah up he pulled Noah up with his thick set thick set he pulled Noah up with his thick set arms covered in tribal tattoos and placed a healing pack on the ground Noah moved within the radius of the healing pack to absorb the health being emitted Rye continued since we now know its weakness from your analy from your analysis we know the best weapon attack would be your astral axe the Urzig roused from his slumber Rye moved forward towards the beast and swung his hammer, pounding the Urzig's tail. Rye hit the Urzig for 150 blunt damage. My turn! shouted Arky, their final group member jumping onto Rye using his arrow flip. He made it look so effortless, which was partly due to his racial affinity and agility as a drow elf, 
and partly due to his elite skills as a hardcore gamer. Aeroflip skill allows players to use behemoths, the environment, or even other players as a makeshift springboard. Arky then dived down onto the Urzig's back and straddled the beast as he tried to keep his balance so as not to fall off. The Urzig tried to buck him off, but Arky used his thighs and knees to squeeze the monster's sides to gain extra grip. He watched the beast's movements carefully to counter them, then, finding the opportune moment, he drew out his dual blades and thrust one of them into the back of the Urzig. This allowed him to create an improvised hook to hold onto with one hand so as not to fall. Arky hit the Urzig for 75 piercing damage, times 0.25 added multiplier. The beast shrieked and reared upwards, but Arky held on. He then shifted his body to the side to reach the Urzig's underbelly and stabbed at it. Arky hit the Urzig for 114 piercing damage, times 0.9 added multiplier. The Terra Behemoth reared up a second time. Arky pulled out the blade from its back and slid down. When he finally reached its tail, he let loose a frenzied four-hit combo attack on it, where he sliced maniacally with his dual blades and dismembered the tail. Multiple attack of four. For each hit, Arky hit the Urzig for 105 piercing damage, times 0.75 added multiplier. That's how you do it, spat Arky, his eyes as gray as his mood. <laughs> Emotionless. Oops. That's how you do it. That's how you, I don't know how to say that. I don't know how to say that's how you do it without emotion. Like, how, okay. That's how you do it, spat Arky. And it's like spat? I don't know. Noah couldn't understand how Arky could be so different. Those moves were awesome. I'd be euphoric. Noah was in awe at Arky's maneuvers. This was the first time he had seen Arky be so good at close quarter. Melee attacks. Be so good at close quarter melee attacks when his usual specialty as a gunslinger was ranged attacks. I guess that's the great thing about I guess that's the great thing about multi specialisms. As Arky bent down to pick up the loot, his long silver hair fell forward, a vast contrast to his dark gray skin and the smoky black garb he wore. Arky picked up severed Urzig tail. With a long shriek, the mammoth creature began its retreat to the to the cliffs. Flory came running over, her long auburn curls bouncing as she strode over to Noah. His stomach nodded, and to avoid her gaze, he looked over at Rye, who followed closely behind with his dark, disheveled hair and his usual beaming smile. Noah responded with a half-smile. Nothing ever phases him. I wish I was like that. It's trying to get away! yelled Flory. Everyone attack! The entire party chased after the quick succession, the entire party chased after the Terra Behemoth and surrounded it, watching their positions so as not to get trampled. In quick succession, they all attacked at it. Noah watched as the Urzig headbutted Rye, knocking the wind out of him and flinging him several yards away. <laughs> Guys, a little help here, said Rye as he got back up. We need to do something before it charges at him and finishes him off, said Noah, keeping some distance away from the gigantic beast who looked about ready to lunge at, at Rye. I'll, I'll use my combo attack to take aggro, said Arky. Moving in at great speed, he interrupted the Urzig's attack as he targeted its hind leg with his dual blade combo attack. Multiple attack of four. For each hit, Arky hit the Urzig for 78 piercing damage, times 0.3 added multiplier. The Terra Behemoth now focused on Arky. Nice one, man, said Rai as he joined up with the group and emoted a high five. Arky left him high and dry. Oh, fuck. My blades are losing their sharpness. Don't worry, said Flory. It's almost down as it's, as it's doing the final moves where it shakes boulders off its back. Massive rocks raced through the air all around them. One of them, the size of an average boulder, missed Noah's face by mere inches. Whoa! That was too damn close, exclaimed Noah. Arky pulled out a whetstone and, gilt and glided the blades along its edge until they sang. Ah, my buttes. Ro, you hit the final blow while we cover you, ordered Arky. On it, said Noah, as he slung his astral axe and held it at the ready. The weapon, etched with runic markings along the haft of the axe, emanated an ethereal indigo glow with luminous particles. 
The Urzig lowered its head to the ground, ready to charge at Noah, its eyes narrowing as it leaped towards him. With a hefty forward swing, he struck a finishing blow against its skull. Critical hit. Multiplier applied. Roe hit the Urzig for 174 physical damage, times 0.85. Roe hit the Urzig for 250 elemental damage. Bonus 250 damage from astral weakness. As the monstrosity plummeted to the ground, the earth beneath them trembled, and a large cloud of dust arose as if suspended in the air for a short delay. Excuse me. Great job, guys, said Noah. Arky merely nodded his approval. Yeah, go team, shouted Flory enthusiastically, displaying a thumbs up. We did good, said Rye. Now, now to get me some loot. All right. So that was our request for today. Come on, come on back, guys. What's going on? How come I'm hey, guys. Oh, I don't want it? Were you lonely? I was a bit, I was a bit lonely. I was a bit lonely, but it was for a good cause. It was for uh, reading the top request of the poll today, Amelia Gaines, Age of Behemoths. Um, this book isn't even out yet. Uh, she's still writing this book. She is working really hard on it, I think. If you go to her website, you'll find that she's got her shit together as far as like marketing, getting her, getting, you know, good nice. covers, uh, getting everything ready so that whenever she does release it um, and, you know, if if it does well, then her website's ready to take on fans or you know whatever. Uh, I think I think she did a really great job with it. I you know, the cover for this one because I thought yeah. the cover of this one looked pretty nice. But ah, there, there, it is. there it is. It's a beautiful um, cover. You know, really it, it might be done by the same guy. Um, if you guys ever read uh, Rune RuneScape, is it RuneScape? I know Hugo RuneScape is definitely a game. Yeah, there's a game called RuneScape. Rune something else. Rune something. Uh, it, Hugo Huesca's first book. I think it's. I hmm. think it's the same artist. Maybe. It also. Oh, you know. It also looks like. Um, what's that one book that we're we're kind of after right now? Uh, that we've been reading. The Last Physicist. We've been looking at the Last Physicist. Yeah, yes. It by, uh, like that artwork too. Dominic Stahl. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Same color yeah. scheme. That uh, yeah. that like dark blue and the Me purple purpley. and the light blue and the Very white. Cool. Very, Very lo-fi. Cool. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Um, yeah, so I decided, guys, to do our uh, our poll request today. That way, because I feel like a giant dick. That's why. Um, last week, we were goofing. We were goofing on, on somebody's request. The author uh, and uh, actually a few other, other authors who've been kind of pissed at me. Have, we're, we're chatting. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, and it's because I've been taking this poll for granted. I think we all have. And it's just because we're, we're trying to have fun with this show. And you know what? It's not worth hurting the author's feelings over. I really don't think so. I, I think I think it was, it was not a good move. Yeah. Not a good mm -hmm. look. Mm -hmm. Right. So. <laughs> we're going to we're going to change. We're going to change the way we do rune universe. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Gary Dose. Um, <clears throat> That's Hugo. Why didn't they call it Runiverse? Runiverse? That's a missed opportunity, though. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, uh, so we're gonna change things up quite a lot. Um, for any of you who've been watching this show for a long time, you might remember that we didn't always have all this fancy stuff and all of these cool people backing me up. It used to be just me, um, and, and I would just read, you know, three or four requests a day. And it was just me and, you know, I would do my best for everybody and, you know, give everybody promotion and everything like that. And I think that we need to go back to that. Um, mm -hmm. I think that there's there's a really a place for that. And, you know, us goofing has has sort of taken taken that away from authors, taken that away from listeners mm -hmm. even who who, you know, may even be watching specifically to see what new stuff might be uh, popping up on Amazon that they haven't seen around. Um, mm -hmm. so we're splitting the poll. We're doing something different. So we're going to have two different polls from now on, and they're going to alternate every two weeks. So tomorrow's poll, because we just did a serious one today, tomorrow's poll is all going to be about goofs. So Goof. I'm going to make a poll and 
any of you listeners out there can nominate whatever you want, as long as it's 1,000 words or less. And it can be from any famous movie or any famous book or just crap on the internet that you think is cringe. Anything that you want, as long as it's not like an indie author who's kind of in our community or, uh, you know, somebody who might actually give a shit that it's up there, right? Um, if you do decide that you really want to uh, request something that people, that someone might give a shit about, make sure that you get their permission to put it on the poll because we are going to goof on it. Whatever this next poll that goes up is, and I haven't decided a name for that one, for that particular goof poll, um, but I'll come up with a name before tomorrow. We'll put up that poll tomorrow and you guys go crazy with it. Nominate whatever you want and the poll will just be a bunch of random crazy shit and you guys vote and we'll do it as a team and we'll fuck it up. But two weeks from tomorrow, a new poll is going up that's going to be more serious. I'm going to, I want to call it SBTL Classic. And that is where Ooh. only authors can nominate their own work. They will be contacting Danny Katz, our very trusty Facebook group admin. And they can say to Danny, I would like to request my book. And again, we're only going to go for 1,000 words from now on. 1K. 1K or less. But that one, I'm going to run solo. And so, uh, you know, whatever directions you give me, I'll play it straight. And then we'll invite you on if you're an author right that that requested it we'll invite you on you can come on and talk about your work or not you know you don't have to come on but this is it'll be an opportunity for authors in this community to promote like for real and not be goofed on mm -hmm. so this is this is me trying to fix my own idiotic behavior mm -hmm. so thank you authors thank you danny for letting me know the authors were talking um, and thank you authors for, uh, I actually did talk to one, one gentleman who, who was, you know, really civil with me. Um, and, you know, I was able to, you know, apologize to him and hopefully he brought my apology to the rest of the authors who were, who were bothered by it. I get to apologize publicly and tell all my listeners, yeah, I was being a dick. Um, please make fun of me however you want. Cool. All right. Let's move on. Move on.